Are you ready? Unfortunately. To each line. Oh my god, they're already starting with music. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what? We're literally you. starting off with we're burning puppies because we're evil. I have to assume they're like mutants and dying or something. What the fuck? How are we starting with this? Hold on, what did that thing say? The, the sign above the uh, incinerator. What did it say? It said incinerate puppies something. Incinerate newborns weighing less than 10 ounces. Oh, so they literally are just burning puppies. Yeah. What the fuck? What the hell is this? I don't know. I just, I can't get over that burning puppies thing. What the fuck was that? I don't like, know. Because, <laughs> like, even in Fallout, you know, in the actual games... They didn't just like randomly kill animals, you know, like even if they weren't like perfect or however, you know, like. So that's the thing about Fallout. They didn't just randomly kill people and animals. They actually tried to like do stuff with them where even if they were like deformed or something, they would still keep them around. They probably wouldn't sell them. You know, they, they didn't just, like, murder them because they're fucking evil. They didn't go, hmm, yes, we incinerate well, puppies for being literally, uh, like, 10 ounces underweight. Or less than 10 ounces. Um, this is the Enclave, though, so it makes sense that they're horrible, evil bad guys who burn puppies. This... Are little... little... Are they Enclave? How do you know that? How do you know they're Enclave? Because he's the escaped Enclave scientist they mentioned in the previous episode. I don't remember them mentioning he was Enclave. Well, they said there was an escaped uh, Enclave guy they're looking for, and it was his picture that they were sharing. Mm. God, but, I must have been so fucking out of it by that point. I I didn't even hear that. <laughs> I also didn't include it in the video you just watched. Because there's pretty much no point. There's not much to it. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, our literal introduction to the Enclave is, oh, look at them, they burn puppies. Aren't they evil? I mean, yeah, the Enclave are bad guys. I just, I don't, I, I never got the impression the Enclave would literally just burn puppies. Yeah. This just feels like we need to set up how evil they are, so let's just do, like the most cartoonishly evil shit we can to show that they're evil. Yeah. That's all it is. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it makes sense that this is Enclave because I was going to say, if this was like normal Fallout and they, like I said, they usually let, will like let those things live. <laughs> you know, if there's something wrong with them, they'll still usually let them live or they'd eat them because they needed food. Yeah. It's literally like a thing that they would eat cats in what Fallout One? They mentioned that that they would eat the cats. Yeah. Oh my god. God, this is such a strange choice of music too for this. Like it just doesn't. Well, we have to use the music from the games because it's in the games. But why couldn't they use it in places where it makes sense? I don't like know. here. I don't even think they. Here, I don't even think they should be playing oldies music at all. I think they should be playing something a little bit more tense or mysterious. Yeah. But if you wanted to play this particular song, why not play it over something where it makes sense? Or like, if you wanted to play an oldie song over this, why not get a song that actually kind of fits with what's happening? And we're not getting that. It's just random. It's completely fucking random. It's just there because we, well, it's from the games and we have to make this this look somewhat like it literally just feels like we have to plaster music from the games all over the show at random or else people won't know that this is Fallout because it's clearly not Fallout. Yeah, it's really fucking annoying. And I feel like this is just going to go on for the entire series at this point. It probably will. You could swap this song out for pretty much any other song in Fallout 3 and 4, aside from maybe Butcher Pete. That's probably literally the one they'll be like, yeah, we should use that for an actual combat scene. But, like, 
put maybe here. Put I don't want to set the world on fire. Put um. Oh God, uh, what's that one where? Uh, wonderful guy. Put a wonderful guy here, from Fallout Three, and it's just the same. It's it's it just feels completely out of place. Mm-hmm. Or uh, the one I really like, uh, anything goes. Literally, just have that play over this, and it would be no different than what we actually have. Yeah, it's just random. It's literally just, well, uh, it's almost like they're taking like a a dart and they're throwing it fucking songs they have plastered on a dartboard, <laughs> and they're like, uh, this song for this. Thing. It's literally how it feels because there's nothing connecting it to what's actually happening at all. Ah, uh, really? I feel like if you're not precise with that, that would really fuck you up. That's a big fucking needle, man. Yeah, Jesus. Weird you could see the glow if it... <laughs> it looked like it went pretty deep in there. It shouldn't be, like, right up the edge of the skin. Yeah. Weird that you could see the glow. I mean, I guess they had to show that they, he put it in there, but still, that's that's weird. I mean, the implication from everything we saw leading up to that would have been like, yeah, it's inside him now. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be something like, oh, they're coming. I need to like close this before they get here. No, he's just in there. He's just in the fucking room. <laughs> First of all, Jesus. how did he not notice this guy enter? What's with the weird fucking, like, I'm going to raise my hand and slightly point at the alarm thing? Like, what the fuck was that? Oh, right, this scene. God. Yeah. I forgot about this. <laughs> Where he walks... I should say walks. He kind of jogs slowly away from the turret fire, and it looks like, no, it should be shredding him. Yeah, he should absolutely be getting hit here. <laughs> Maybe they fixed it from the time when they showed the trailer, but I, I did. <laughs> Please, they didn't even fix the Cyclops. Like, they're not going to fix this. <laughs> Why are you standing there? Yeah, what the fuck? Why are you, like, standing? Come on! It's hitting the tree! No! It's hitting the tree directly in front of him, and he's just kind of, like... It, it, I can't even call it jogging. It's, like, brisk walking. You're supposed <laughs> to outrun a turret briskly walking. Are you... Fuck off! Yeah, this is bullshit. Come on, he should be fucking dead. It does! It, it crosses his path! Ow. No, fuck off. No, there, there's there's no. a 0% chance that when you fire that many bullets at a slow-moving target that you're going to miss. It hit literally yeah, everything no. except for him and the dog. That's bullshit. One of those should have hit at the very least. He should have been split in half. That was insane. Yeah. But again, God, people are praising so shit people are and lazy. This is good somehow. It's so fucking lazy. You couldn't have gotten, like, a stunt double to, like, run for him? Something? What the fuck is you the You couldn't point have done a second take? What the fuck is the point in having a turret there? If, uh, briskly moving forwards and you're just immune to the bullets. They'll, they, they'll never yeah. hit you if you walk briskly. He wasn't running. He Even someone running full tilt, I wouldn't expect to cover that much distance without getting hit. Like, maybe if they're close to a corner and they just fucking go all out to get a around the corner out of line of sight? Maybe. But crossing that entire area? No. I'm sorry, the point of an automated turret is that it will get people who are moving in an area. Yeah, if he was running like, at an actual running speed... And he started doing it the moment that it was coming out because he realized what it was. And it still took like that amount of time to rut, like, you know, spin up and start shooting. Maybe if he had like it, by the time, you know, it had actually started firing, he was like, 
almost to the corner and it was still like, yeah. you know, trying to get to the point where it was following him and he turns the corner before it reached him. Okay. It didn't do that though. It fucking, it starts shooting behind him crosses in front of him. Like it, it clearly gets to the point where it's on him crosses in front of him where he would be running into the bullets and it's just on him the whole time that he's running. Yeah. After that. And, and it's like, what the fuck? It also doesn't help that he just stands there like a fucking goober, like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, a fucking turret is popping up? Oh, that can't possibly be for me. <laughs> like, what? You know that's for you. Fucking start running. Don't just be there like, oh, 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 oh run, 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 run. There's also the fact that you could see bullets somehow sparking off of the like bushes and trees in front of like in between him and the turret. It's like, I'm sorry, but no. That's not how that works. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Off. They did something unique with the logo from last time because last time it got burnt up because there's nuclear explosions. This time it got shot because there was a turret there. That's the kind of thing I only respect in something that's actually like decently well made. Like how One Piece did the uh, different title cards for each episode. Those were cool because the show was actually good. Oh my god. I, I'm going to fucking break something if I hear another random fucking oldie song come in for no reason. <laughs> Immediately right into another oldie song. Just... Bl just blaring over everything because that we have to have all these fucking songs playing over everything. Just we can never just have a quiet moment. Just to make it clear to anyone watching this, we are l just under six minutes in and this is our second oldie song. And, and they played pretty much the entire song last time. Let me be I just can't help think of an alternate version of this show. First of all, where it's good, but like Imagine our vault dweller out and about in the wasteland now, and you have either tracks from the game or tracks similar to those from the original games playing in the background. Like I referenced um, City of the Dead last time, but just imagine some of the other tracks for like wasteland explore, uh, exploring from Fallout 1 and 2 playing as they're going through this desolate wasteland. Because that's part of what established the atmosphere so well in the originals was, like, this non-traditional soundtrack where it's an emphasis on the dark tone of the world, the, the series. And it, it I, I'd say it helps with that, like, feeling of loneliness and isolation, too. Mm hmm. Yeah, when I think Fallout music, I don't think of the fucking oldies they play in the Bethesda games on the radio. I think of the like industrial, like siren yeah. type music that they play in like one, two. Uh, they reuse some of those in New Vegas. They oh, also they have some new ones in New Vegas. Even three. Like, I wouldn't consider it like industrial or anything, but like it had somber music. Yeah. Like the ambient tracks actually were pretty decent. Yep. I wouldn't mind hearing the Fallout 3 ambient track here. No, it, it all has to be these fucking oldie songs from the radio. It, it's not Fallout. This just isn't Fallout. There's no atmosphere. And this is one of the thing that, things that bugs me about Bethesda Fallout 2 is the oldie songs in the, the first two games were only in the opening. You got uh, maybe in Fallout 1 for its like opening cinematic thing. 
And then you got uh, Kiss to Build a Dream on and Fallout 2 for their opening cinematic. And that was the only time you heard those songs. The rest of the time, it was the somber industrial uh, music that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind the existence of the radio in Fallout 3 and 4. I actually quite like that as an addition. The problem is that people have taken that to meaning that Oh, this is all Fallout should be like have for music now, where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's just oldies all the time now. It's music from the 40s and 50s nonstop. It'd be one thing if if there was like a scene where like, oh, the radio is playing, yeah, and this is what the this is what they're playing, and we're gonna like, you know, have like a zoom in or something on the on the radio, and then have the song get louder and everything else become muffled. And then have that play over the scene, yeah. you know, kind of like, you know, just something to build the scene. And then when you're not, you know, next to a radio, don't play fucking oldies music all the time. Play the actual soundtrack of Fallout. Play the industrial stuff. Play the siren stuff. Play even the orchestral stuff from fucking Fallout 3. Just play the somber, creepy stuff. That's what Fallout is. That is the actual Fallout music. The stuff on the radio is just that. It's songs on a radio. It's not the actual, like... Soundtrack of it's the not world. The actual, yeah, it's not the actual soundtrack of the world. And I hate that that's all they've made it now. Yeah. Like, there is no soundtrack anymore. It's literally just... It's just oldie songs. Yeah, if you knew nothing about the first two games, you would assume they were the fucking same as Fallout 3 and 4, which just oldies all the time. It's mm -hmm. not. I hate that they're doing it here. Please God. I want to take this scene, like, the moment that this scene starts to maybe, like, right at the end of that where, you know, did that pan out, and just replace the music with something from Fallout 1 or 2. I can and see how I can edit that into the uh, version of this video, like right after that as a comparison. I think you should just so we can do like a comparison and be like, like, this is what the show is doing. Here's what it would actually sound like if it was actually playing the Fallout OST and how much it would improve the scene. Especially the scene here of her wandering through this, like, abandoned town. I feel like one of the tracks would fit in really well, depending on how this goes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna nitpick. I don't think a, a skeleton 220 years later would have any hair left. Especially when re the rest of the flesh is gone. Come on. Yeah, especially when it's exposed to like the air and sand, which would be blasting it constantly. Nah, I shouldn't have hair. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's kind of a nitpick to me, yeah. but it it, it is it, it just, is annoying. It's one of those things that stands out to me. Like, oh, that's that's kind of dumb. Why is that there? It doesn't ruin yeah. the, the entire show. But it's like. Mm. It's very strange that they even bothered to do that. But Pagan, especially when we we got some in the last <sighs> episode, and we're getting some here. We we're, we're getting environmental storytelling skeletons. God, I hate that. I hate that. That that's <laughs> that's probably going to be like the deepest fucking storytelling we get in here too. Is going to be fucking oh look skeletons and they died somehow. We know how they died. There's a bottle of poison on the table here. They killed themselves because of the nuke. And their children. I don't know. I feel like by the time that you would see nukes going off, I, I feel like <laughs> poison wouldn't kill you fast enough before the fucking blast hit you. Yeah. I guess best faith interpretation would be they killed themselves before the bombs dropped because they they were a bunch of panicky people like that weird news guy who's like, oh, I can't do my job if I don't know there's going to be a world next week. You know, maybe 
Maybe they heard it on the news. Maybe they had the TV on and they're because like if, saying. If we ignore the lore break of uh, the nukes dropping at fucking 3 p.m. on the West Coast, uh, if they heard the news report that they're dropping on the East Coast, and the, well, that still wouldn't make sense. Why are they having breakfast at fucking 6.47 a.m. on a Saturday? The entire family. Yeah, that's a bit odd. Maybe they're just really early morning people, okay? <laughs> like everyone on the West Coast, apparently. So early in the morning, it's 3 p.m. when the bombs are dropping. vault Tech poison, really? Oh, come on! Why vault is it vault Tech poison? Why can't it just be fucking poison? vault Tech wasn't in control of literally everything. Like... I guess we got that scene in the preview. It's like, vault Tech owns half of everything. Fucking how? Why? What, does Nuka-Cola own the other half of everything? And we're just right back to the fucking oldies again. They're... They barely spent time on that moment. It, it, why even have it there, aside from literally showing storytelling skeletons? Yeah. I don't know. She seems way too comfortable. Yeah. Out here. I feel like her reaction should be a little bit more like, oh, fuck, I made a mistake. Yeah. The fact that she's just comfortable. It kind of, in fact, it kind of contradicts the whole thing of like, why bother showing the skeleton thing if you're just going to have her be like, you know what? It's actually pretty nice out here. It's like, uh, <laughs> What was the point of the fucking skeletons then? <laughs> if it didn't affect her at all, why even show it? Yeah, I, I feel like she should be a lot more like scared and nervous about how screwed up everything is. It's like, yeah, sure, they're two hundred year old skeletons, but like, even then, you're out. You've lived your entire life in a vault, and this is your first time outside, and. Everything is fucked and destroyed. Everything is in ruins. You're finding literal corpses. I don't know, man. It, it, this seems like a fucking cozy camping trip so far. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just 200-year-old skeletons. It's... It's 200-year-old corpses in a place where she knows people exist... Yeah. And they have not been buried. Yeah. They've been left here for 200 years. People have likely seen them and done nothing. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, it, that, should, that should probably tell you, oh, this is not... Like, this place up here is not okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Before the war, people joked about cockroaches surviving a nuclear blast but they didn't merely survive they improved you should know better than to light a fire after dark listen you need to go home miss vault dwellers are an endangered species here you come from a world of rules of laws this place is indifferent i do not think you would be willing to do what it takes to survive up here if you insist on staying then you will have to adapt. The question is, will you still want the same things when you have become a different animal altogether? Oh my god, she can see the thing in his neck. Oh my god, I was about to say that actually was a somewhat decent scene. Considering he's not actually a wastelander, it actually makes sense that he would kind of have this view of the wasteland. Yeah. And would like warn her to go back. Uh, didn't actually find the rad roach scene as cringy as it was in the trailer. And the music was actually kind of good for a second there. And then they fucked it up by being like, oh, you could plainly see the blinking light in his neck. <laughs> like, come on. Did we really have to do that? Yeah. I, I don't completely hate this scene. I feel like they could have done some better dialogue for it, but it's not... Oh yeah, the dialogue could have been better. 
but it's not completely terrible. Like, in an alternate universe where the show is simply just mid, it's like, yeah, that's a solid, you know, 5 out of 10. It'd be like, yeah, that just fits in with everything else. But so far, this is the best scene just by, like, it's a winner by default. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so far, this is the best scene we've had in the entire show. My lord, Titus! I see you went with the tempered lining on the T-60. Does that, that help with mobility? Oh, my God. All the things you could have asked. I just don't like that they went with cringe dialogue. They could have literally had him ask anything, like, Something like I've never been... Yeah, just like, I've never been out here before. Is there anything I should be aware of? Yeah. You know, and then have him maybe give him, like, an ominous warning or something. Like, even as, like... Like, you could still keep him as, like, a dickhead. You know, and just have him be, like, you know, some vague warning about something just to scare him. Yeah. But instead, we get one of the most inane questions ever. Did you choose that lining because it's better for mobility? What? Yeah, and then he just rips it off. He's like, clean it! (laughs) <laughs> like for fuck's sake you could have done anything here and like i literally came up with something better like on the spot as soon as i saw it like instantly i was like yeah you could have just asked him like I- i've never been out on one of these patrols is there anything i should be worried about and just have him say something like i hear the bears are pretty big out here better watch that something you know literally anything could have been better yes and we got this. And <laughs> it's like, come on, the dialogue is so shit. Set us down. What the fuck? I want to shoot something. Oh, my lord, we were assigned to search a town called Philly. We're still miles from. Oh, fuck off. Set us down. I want to shoot something. What is this, dude? Oh my god, (laughs) this is so shit. I feel like by the time you reach night, the Brotherhood would have, like, trained that kind of mentality out of you, or you would have been like, okay, we can't have you as a knight if you you just impulsively want to shoot things. Yeah, no, they would have... Remember... (sighs) God, I have to reference New Vegas. This sort of thing only happened with trainees. Remember with the Brotherhood, you had the Stanton and uh, what's her name? The blonde haired girl. They snuck out to go shoot rad scorpions. They were trainees. Yeah. They were not knights. And then the only time we actually see the Brotherhood like actually do something where they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to like. You know, like, we want to shoot something because we're angry was when they felt that Veronica had completely betrayed the Brotherhood and was a traitor and was trying to either leave the Brotherhood or change it too much, like completely like bring in outsiders, change everything about it. And it's only at the end of that quest that, you know, because like they they have some confrontations where they're like they're they give her some warnings. you're, You're pushing too hard. And then at the very end of that is when they finally pull out their guns and they're like, we're going to fucking kill you. Which you can talk them down out of. Yeah. And then here it's literally just, oh, mission? Me want shoot. Put down bird. Me shoot something. Oh my god, they turned him into a super mutant. (laughs) Literally. But... Also, it's a fact that I don't believe a Brotherhood Knight would just want to waste ammo shooting random things because he just has the urge to shoot, you know? Yeah. Um, Especially given that, like, yeah, this is a post-apocalypse. I don't care how well outfitted the Brotherhood is. You're not going to just want to waste ammo pointlessly. Um, We even see this in Fallout 3 with... uh, that one initiate that gets uh, killed by the behemoth when you're going after um, GNR, she shoots uh, bullets into the air, and Sarah Lyons is like, hey, don't waste ammo. Yeah, they reprimand her for it. You know what? I'm kind of glad they didn't do the uh, just jump from any height thing here with the power armor. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I'm surprised they had the restraint yeah. to actually have him lower down rather than to have him do like a superhero landing. Yeah. It is weird, though, that he strapped Buddy to his chest, though. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> also, I know it's in a bag, but from that height, man, if he had like optics on that gun, they are probably broken. Like, if you had a scope or a reflex sight or something, they are probably either bent or broken. Yeah, I'm just going to sit yeah, down I don't know. on this barrel of nuclear waste. Yeah, I'm going to sit on a barrel of nuclear waste next to a fucking cave. I, I don't know, man. I feel like if I had had, like, even a remote knowledge of the wasteland, probably wouldn't sit somewhere where fucking animals could take shelter. I'd be hesitant to sit down next to a random cave in the real world, let alone in the post-nuclear apocalypse full of mutants like uh, Yao Guai and fucking Death Claws. Yeah, exactly. It's like... Like, Yao Guai is a side because we know that that's what's going to pop up. It's like, there's a million other things that could be out there. Like, that could be a cave full of rad scorpions, mole rats. There Creatures could be Death Claws living... Before. Yeah, there could be fucking death claws in there. There could be fucking uh, like mutated wolves. There could be all kinds of things in there. Like, why would you sit near an, a, a fucking cave in the wasteland? Yeah. No, you're just noticing that now. Wow, you really are a special kind of stupid. <laughs> God, why does he move around so much? It looks so fake. It just doesn't look good. Yeah, it almost feels like they're overemphasizing how much he moves. Mm-hmm. And it just, it looks... Very yeah. exaggerated movements that just doesn't look right. Also, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to keep saying it. I fucking hate that gun so much. Yeah, I can't believe they brought that back. Like, the one thing everyone agreed with, like, even people who like Fallout 4 agreed that the assault rifle looked fucking shit in that game and they brought it back why seriously you could have just given them like a classic m60 and it would still fit perfectly within the the lore of the game like of the style and it would make sense for a big ass fucking power armor guy to be wielding a fucking m60 dude the amount of absurd and insane coincidence for Brotherhood guy to be just like, I feel like shooting something, set us down here. And he just so happens to be like fucking 20 meters away from the Enclave scientist, dude. Come on. Yeah. They're right next to the fucking place where he's eating, and then they walk to the exact spot where he was and was attacked by a fucking. Well, we don't know if he was attacked, but where the fucking Yagwai is, basically here to save him, like, oh, Yeah, they... God. Just to make it clear, uh, the USA is a very, very big place, and when you have one guy traveling across the wasteland, and you have uh, a Brotherhood guy looking for that guy in the vast, empty space of the wasteland... The chances of them randomly bumping into each other, again, completely at random, because they were going somewhere else. They dropped off way sooner than they should have. And it's just astronomical. Yeah, there's like no... They're not following a like a breadcrumb trail of like evidence or something. Like nothing. It's literally just, I want to stop here to shoot something. And it just happens to be on the exact spot of the guy that they're looking for. And it's like, fucking how? Yeah. There was nothing that even led them here. They just happened to be here. But remember, they nailed it. Oh my god. <laughs> they were here, a man, and a dog. The target. How do you know? How, how do you know? How do you know it's not just a guy with a dog? What makes him the target? Especially since a guy and a dog is pretty much the entire franchise at this point. Yeah. You had a dog in Fallout 1. You you get a dog in Fallout 2 in a... Is it a random encounter? Like an Easter egg where you get dog meat? 
Uh, but Fallout 3, know. man and a dog, it literally, like, the end screen is your character and a dog walking down the road. Fallout 4, you're practically joined at the hip with the fucking dog. Dogs are shown to be a prevalent part of Fallout. They're everywhere. People have them all the time. They're not rare. Yeah. So for it to be like, oh yeah, there was a guy and a dog here. They ate. This must be the target. Fucking how do you ever possibly come to that conclusion? Like the only thing that could possibly give it away is maybe the fact that it's a science coat. But did they even know he was wearing a science coat? I thought they just had like the face. Yeah, that's they, it. They had the face. Um, also, the fact that like lab coats as well are not like rare in this universe. There's people in every game who wear lab coats, or yeah, they're not the most common art of uh, article of clothing, but they're common enough apparently for every scientist that needs one to have one. Clothing also is just not a good like indicator of who you're looking for. Yeah. Um, especially in a search that could take months because they can change their outfit, especially if they know that they're being followed or pursued, they likely wouldn't keep the same exact outfit that they likely were profiled with. I have another problem. What? Our enclave scientist guy already ran into Lucy too. So he essentially, this guy crossed both main characters paths within like 15 minutes of each other not in yep. world time but in episode time that is some insane coincidence there mm -hmm. if they were... fuck. <laughs> fuck i thought you, you wanted, said you to, wanted shoot to shoot something. something yeah you should be happy you should be thrilled you should be like oh fuck yeah Something to kill. Why was the outside so blurry there? I wasn't looking at the outside. Okay, I must have missed that. Why is it so blurry above him? Whoa! What the fuck? Yeah, especially the where the power armor guy is. It's doing the fisheye lens thing. What the yeah, fuck? That's kind of what I was referring to. That looks really weird. Yeah, why is it doing that? What? This isn't even like a fisheye angle. Like, everything else looks normal. It's only the background. Not only is it only the background, it's that specific area of background. Yeah. What? Why? That's, that's fucking weird. Yeah, I'm curious what the explanation behind that is. Like, it probably like isn't what one. In no, I meant, like, what in production oh. caused that. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't even know how you would manage to get that effect. In fact, it doesn't even look like the same background as the one where the, the squire is. It, it almost looks like a different forest. Yeah. Like, even the sky looks different. Look at that. Yeah. What the fuck? Why is there, like, two separate... Did they literally just Google images of backgrounds and they're like, oh, I'll put one here and then put one here and they didn't even care that one of them was warped? I don't know, maybe. Like, how else do you even explain that? I, I don't like, know. Like, I know it's a, it's a small thing, but it's just so weird. Yeah. It's just one of those things where it's like, but why, though? Yeah. It's worse when you that see looks... more of it. Ooh. Hold on. Yeah. Because that was only a small portion of it. We see a lot more. What the fuck? What is happening? Yeah, there's some weird effect going on there, and I don't know what it is. This isn't just, like, slightly out of focus background. This, this is fucking weird. Yeah, you could like see the the sphere shape in the tree, like where the fish islands is, basically. Yeah, because everything like, is curving in that direction. What the fuck? I don't know what that is. I don't know why they have that there. That is so weird. Yeah. Go see if the target's in there. Uh. 
wh why are you not going? You have fucking power armor and a gun. I'm a big one. I'm pretty sure they don't just send people in to die horribly when they know there's something extremely dangerous in there. Like, I, yeah, I wouldn't well, necessarily call power armor soldiers, like, frontline soldiers, but they wouldn't just send, like, inexperienced kid guy to go die. Especially a squire. He's a squire. He's not even a foot soldier. Yeah. Like, why would you do that? that in any other game, they would have been like, stay here. I'll go check. Like, th that's just what any other knight would have done. Here, he's like, you, unarmored person with a pistol, go in there and check it out. Like, one, it, it's full of radiation by the looks of it. He's not in a fucking hermetically sealed fucking suit that's supposed to keep out radiation. Like you are, you fucking idiot. <laughs> you know there's a bear in here. Probably going to eat him. Maybe that's what he wants. That's the only thing I can ex I can like figure is that he wants him to die, but then it's like, but why? Because I hate this kid randomly too. They didn't beat him up enough in the previous episode. They should have killed him. There has to be a reason why everyone hates this kid. Like there has to be something to like his his story or something. Like when they found him or something that just everyone hates him. Like, there has to be something. It can't literally just be everyone hates him because the universe has just willed it that this person will forever be hated by everyone. Lord, I, I don't have armor. You are in a suit through acts of bravery. This is an act of bravery. Oh, fuck off. That's retarded. That's literally, like... That's just suicide. There, it, it... There's difference between bravery and suicide. Yeah, this is just insane. No, an act of bravery is if, like, you go in there and you get attacked by the fucking bear, and then, like, as you're wrestling with it, he jumps on its head and stabs it in the eye or something to get it off of you. That's an act of bravery. Yeah. Just sending him into the room to die is just straight-up suicide. This is stupid. Hey, there's 40 turrets in there on a hair trigger. The second someone steps through that door, they're gonna blow them away. You go first. But... You have armor. I don't. You get the armor through acts of bravery. It's brave to go into the suicide room. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? Like, I, I genuinely can't tell if this is supposed to be, like, like, a genuine thing that the Brotherhood believes because they've changed the Brotherhood so much, or if this guy is actually just, like, an evil piece of shit who wants this kid to die because he doesn't want to be strapped to him for some reason. What's the problem? Come on. Come on. This is stupid. Oh my god, is he gonna turn around and be like, there's nothing here? And then he gets like grabbed from the side, like you know, like it runs in from the side and grabs him. Is it literally gonna be the fucking like I hope they don't. most it's the most cliche fucking shot that has ever existed in any fucking like film like this where that happens because that that's always the shot they go with every time it genuinely feels like the show wants you to hate this character because everyone else seems to he gets beaten up he's stuck on the train duty he throws his little temper tantrum shit fits they immediately assume he's the one who horribly injured his only friend and now that he's you know he's gotten a rank up he's gotten a promotion this guy's just constantly treating him like shit. Hey, go into this death trap. What's the matter, dipshit? Like, that just doesn't sound like the Brotherhood at all. No. Fucking, like... God. I, I hate it so much. Yeah, this is fucking weird, man. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't know, man. Something about the voice filter makes that scene way funnier than it should be. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. <laughs> In this, like, really low, almost like Darth Vader voice. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> it feels like a parody. Yeah, this is... 
almost what I would imagine like a uh, robot chicken parody of Star Wars to be where, you know, Vader is on a planet and a bear attacks him, swipes his lightsaber and just picks him up and starts uh, throttling him. Just imagine the bear doing that to Darth Vader and Vader going, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I, I can I can yeah. see the robot chicken skit in my head of that. Yeah, I can too. <laughs> it just feels like a parody, man. I, oh my god! How would he have not heard this thing coming up behind him? Yeah. You know, also just a slow turnaround thing when Maximus is like, oh, oh you know, like he clearly yeah. looks scared of something behind him. Like it, it is usually really easy to tell when someone is looking at you or when they're looking at something slightly behind you and to the side. Yeah. And the thing that always bothered me was like, there are times where it's okay to do the slow turnaround where when the person that you're looking at is looking in such a way that it's like, there's something behind you, but it's not immediately a threat. Mm -hmm. You know, like in some movies and they'll kind of do like the slow turn. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and then they'll like look at like a guy trying to steal something or whatever. And the guy like freezes like, oh, shit. You know, that sort of thing is fine. But when it's something where it's like, oh, you know, it, it, it's extremely dangerous. We could be killed in here. And then the person looking behind it, like who is looking at you and can see behind you is clearly like, oh, shit, there's something behind you. I, the slow turnaround thing is so dumb. Yeah, it is. It's uh, like they should immediately be whipping around as fast as they can to try and shoot it. <laughs> and like maybe during the turn, if, you know, if the bear were to like swipe the gun out of his hand or something like as he was turning because it was so fast. Like, OK, I can understand that. But it's like it, it's just dumb. Just don't do the slow turnaround thing when it doesn't call for it. Yeah. Why are you just saying holy <laughs> shit? Why, why are you just standing there not doing anything? Like, it's backing up. It's giving you, like, literally, you have all the time in the world to just tackle this thing, pick up your gun, shoot, literally anything. And you're just standing there going, holy shit. Oh, shit, dude. Oh, fuck. Is this someone in the armor who isn't supposed to be in the armor? Because that's the only That's what it feels like. Because Yeah, yeah this... I, I don't imagine a Brotherhood Knight losing their shit going, oh fuck, oh fuck, holy shit, just because they're encountering a, a Yao Guai. Yeah, I don't either. This... God, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that would make the scene any better. Because it's, that would also be really stupid if it turns out it's literally like a trainee. What if it's his Get it? fucking retarded friend? Oh my god. Well, then why would she be sending him to his fucking death? Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. This is so weird. I I don't know. It might genuinely just be like, this is just a retarded fucking night. Like, <laughs> But he shouldn't have got that far if he's this fucking lame. I know he shouldn't, but maybe all the knights are like this. Maybe this is all of them. Oh, my God. The, the Brotherhood have been drinking the uh, water with the lead in it. <laughs> Either they're all retarded, or they maybe they have this special needs program where they let the retarded ones get night rankings too, and they put them <laughs> on like the, the bullshit missions that don't actually matter and just to make them think that they are doing something. And he and the Squire got fucking <laughs> strapped to the fucking retard brigade. <laughs> And uh, and that's what's going on. That or, yeah, this is just straight up a trainee who stole the suit somehow, wasn't caught, and is taking it for a joyride somehow, and nobody knows. And now he's like, it's like backfiring on them because they're fucking retarded. Yeah, because this, this I, I would never... Brotherhood Knights don't act like this, like in any of the games. Mm-mm. It's really weird. 
there's a reason why people would compare them to like Warhammer knights and stuff like the um space marines and stuff you know like they they didn't fuck around you know they they weren't like untrained pathetic pieces of shit they they actually had like training and dignity and you know like discipline yeah and they were actually really combat effective like right there that the part where the the bear like was staggered a little bit he wouldn't have just stood there going, oh, fuck. He would have pulled like a fucking combat knife out or something and like stabbed it in the eye. Yeah. While it was doing that, like he would have grabbed it and fucking just r- wrenched a fucking knife into its head or something like he would have done something. He wouldn't have just stood there like, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, shit. I'm yeah, screwed, he, guys. Even if he didn't have a knife, he would take the opportunity and use it to his advantage. Mm hmm. He would have done something like he would have at least maybe, I don't know, put it in a chokehold, something punched it in the head. Yeah. Are you fucking Uh, kidding me right now? This? No, no. People said this was good. People said this was good. People said this was accurate to the games. There's no problems with it. Nine out of ten. And we have a Brotherhood Knight running away like a coward, going fuck, 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 fuck. Really? Really? Dude, this is like this is like Saints Row reboot levels of fucking painful. I don't know. I'm actually nearing the point that the Saints Row reboot might actually be better. Like, I mean, it's got fuck? similar dialogue. Fuck right shit, fuck, does. fuck, fuck. Like, what the fuck, man? This is just sad. I I don't know. I, now I kind of am expecting them to do the whole fucking, like, this is actually a uh, a trainee in the suit who, like, took it for a joyride or something. Which I don't know how the fuck he would have gotten by all uh, the security and well, what about the fooled guy anybody. What about the owns the armor in the first place? Yeah, it's like, surely he would be like, my fucking armor's gone. And then, you know, whenever they get back to the base, they would all just be waiting. Like, yeah, the fuckhead, we don't know how you thought that was going to turn out, dumbass. Okay. So we're fucked either way here, but it would make sense if this was a trainee who shouldn't be in there. In the sense that it makes sense they're acting this way. But if it is a trainee... It makes no sense that they got this far in stolen power armor. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's no way. Because, like, even if we assume this is a trainee that came in on the airship who had stolen this power armor previously, like, they have to get out of the power armor at some point. Someone somewhere is going to know that this isn't the real Knight Titus. Mm Mm-hmm. Especially, like, his brothers in arms that he arrived with. Yeah, and it it would be one thing if they were like sneaking around the base or something to get into like a restricted level, and it's only on for like that short amount of time, like that, that like all the time you need yeah. to get to the place, and you know after that it doesn't really matter. But that's not what this is. This is like a long term sort of like fooling thing because it's like yeah no once you get back to the base you would just be fucked. Yeah. In fact, I'm pretty sure they would just radio ahead to the fucking pilot to turn around and bring them back. Yeah. And then the fucking, you know, the guy in the armor would just be like, oh, fuck, 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 as the fucking vertebrae is being turned around. (laughs) Yeah, no, if they if they actually do the whole fucking like this is this is actually just straight up a knight and he's just this pathetic. It's like, how how did he become a fucking knight? Like. Yeah, this is fucking no way. There's no saving this. They didn't just let anybody become a fucking knight, okay? It was kind of a big deal when people got promoted to knight. Yeah, it's not like they the actually video have... games where you complete two quests and get promoted to knight. Yeah, and those were because you were a special exception as well. Yeah. And, like, otherwise, it was like, yeah, no, you had to have a lot of discipline. You had to have a lot of experience, a lot of combat experience. Most of them didn't even survive the training to become knights. 
So the idea that this guy would just be a do- a giant pussy and run away from a fucking Yao Guai, I no fuck off. This can't be a fucking night. And if they say that it is, then that's a huge problem. Yeah. He... Are you fucking serious? Why did you jump headfirst into a rock? Because, ha ha, he knocked himself out. Isn't it funny? <sighs> People said this was good. People are praising this. People are actually fucking defending this. Yeah, I'm, I'm at a loss for words so anyone can watch this and say it's good. This is completely fucked. Even if you aren't a fan of Fallout, even if this is your first Fallout experience, why would you think this is good? Yeah, I don't know. Unless you're literally going into this expecting the whole thing to be a comedy, which I would not. I would not expect something called Fallout to be a fucking comedy, but yeah, yeah, apparently that's the only way. That is the only way, is if you expect literally everything in the show to be a fucking comedy routine, that is the only way you could possibly defend this. But then you couldn't then say like, oh yeah, but it's totally in line with the games. Because it's clearly fucking not. Yeah. Yeah, this is 0% in line with the games. And that's the thing, a lot of people are saying it is completely in line with the games. It's I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'm not seeing it either. <laughs> I like how this guy is just like... Help! Help me! I like how he's just like completely fucking shocked at how pathetic this fucking guy is. Like, he's just like, this motherfucker. They, this hey. motherfucker is my superior. Hey, Pagan, they made a character in the show relatable, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Finally, he wasn't relatable before, but he's starting to get there. Yeah, it's like, uh, I can't believe this shit either, Maximus. I'm right here with you. I'm standing right beside you looking at this shit like, what the fuck? <laughs> I love how he's, like, so fucking, like, dumbfounded. Instead of, like, getting to safety or, you know, like, doing anything, <laughs> he's literally just, like, slowly walking up to the Yaogwai like what the fuck like no way this is happening right now like this is fucking bullshit man i i have to be dreaming i'm gonna go poke this thing to make sure it's not real <laughs> <laughs> he got too irradiated and now he's having fucking hallucinations <laughs> yeah it's like what the fuck like the only way that they could get away with this is like we said if this is a fucking trainee who stole the fucking armor somehow or this is all like a dream or hallucination, which I swear to God, if they pull that, oh my God, fuck you. And even then, if this is a trainee, it breaks other things. So it's just, it's fucked either way. Yeah, it does. (sighs) I can't get over how shit this is. Wait, it's that easy? And you couldn't take this thing on? You fucking worthless bitch. Yeah, no. The right shot with a pistol probably could kill a bear. There are some bears in real life that are super fucking hard to kill, though. There's a story of one... Oh, no, 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 no. It's not even that. I just assumed we were going with, like, oh, super fucking, you know, mutant bear thing that is just highly resistant to bullets and you know, can strip people out of fucking metal armor like a car, like it's fucking nothing, which it was doing before. So I just assumed, oh, it's basically the equivalent of, like, if a super mutant was a bear. Yeah. So probably pistol bullets probably ain't gonna do shit. But no, apparently it's just a regular fucking bear that you can just shoot in the head a couple times and kill. And it's like, if it's that fucking easy, why is this guy struggling so much in power armor? Yeah. I wouldn't expect, like, power armor guy without weapon to fight a bear to be the easiest of fights, but, like, I feel like a few really good punches in power armor and you'd be crippling this thing.
Huh? What do you mean, where were you? Please. There's always something to ruin your fucking day. This wasteland fucking sucks. You're the one that wanted to come down here and shoot something, you dumb bitch. You literally like, I want to come down and shoot something. For all you knew, there could be death claws down here. Why are you bitching and moaning that you ran into a Yaogwai? In fact, I expected this is what you expected to run into. Yeah, I didn't think he would want to come down here to shoot, like, rad roaches or mole rats. I thought he was like, ah, something good to kill, like a Yaogwai. You yeah. Know? I figured he wanted some combat, so why the I, fuck is he bitching and moaning? I can't get over how much of a bitch they're making this Brotherhood Knight. Yeah, because this does not seem like a trainee. This does legitimately just seem like this is just a fucking knight who is just pathetic. Like, how did he ever reach the rank of knight like this? Yeah. Now I'm starting to really worry, how does this shithead of a character get this armor? Like, the... The black guy. How does he get this armor? Because we know for a fact he gets this armor. No, I know. Uh, this guy probably dies horribly at some point when he's out of the armor. See? I don't know. You say that, but I'm starting to think this guy is so pathetic he might actually just be like, right here, he's just gonna be like, fuck it, man, I'm done. I fuck this shit. Get this shit off me. I'm done. And just quits the Brotherhood and walks away. You know what? I haven't seen any other images of this guy going around either. The I'm one... starting to think this guy might actually be so fucking pathetic. C keep in mind, this is like, if they do that, that is a massive fucking problem. You do not just walk away from the Brotherhood. You can't. You literally can't. One, it's drilled into you that you never leave. It's basically like indoctrinated into you that you don't leave. But also, they wouldn't allow it. You can't just walk away. So if he does, that is a major issue. It's also kind of pointless to walk away because, like, what he just said, this wasteland sucks. So yeah. If you leave the Brotherhood, you're still in the wasteland. Dude, I'm so fucking worried. Like, it's already super bad, but it feels like it's about to get so much worse. You're, you're legitimately better off being a part of the Brotherhood where you get stuff like power armor. As opposed to being like a random wastelander with nothing. Yeah. In, in fact, if you had just not opened your fucking mouth, you would have still been on the vertebrate on the way to your actual mission site, you fucking idiot. This is all your fault. Yep. If you had just not said, oh, put us down, I want to shoot something, this would have never happened. But also, I feel like, why are you complaining? I feel like this is what you wanted to happen. Yeah. For remnants that turn out to be a fucking toaster oven. You know what you could do with a fucking toaster oven? Do you have any idea? <laughs> uh... Okay, well, it seems like he actually might die here. Toaster how? ovens. Yeah, I don't know how, but uh, the the technology they typically would bring back was stuff like uh, weapons, plasma weapons, any, any type of energy weapons. Anything super uh, advanced. Yeah, anything that actually really seemed like it could make a difference. Stuff like toaster ovens. They wouldn't give a shit were, about a toaster. Yeah, they don't care about that kind of shit. That is not like... Like, maybe they would send out, like, scrap teams to bring back circuit boards and stuff to make stuff with but like when it comes to like relics no the the relics are not shit like toaster ovens and crap like that it's actual fucking technology what the fuck in fact saying they collect toaster ovens is the kind of thing you would mock the brotherhood with and i'm pretty sure characters yeah. have it's like how people make fun of the railroad for wanting to free vending machines and uh, toasters because their whole thing mm -hmm. is saving synths. It's like, yeah, that's what you say to make fun of them. What the fuck are you doing, man? Can you get me a fucking stim pack instead of just standing there? I'm asking you for a stim pack and you're looking at me. You're looking at me like you don't know what the fuck to do. I got a two-ton irradiated bear on my back and you're standing there. 
You stupid motherfucker, you know this is all your fault. What? Well, now I hope he shoots him. You know what they do to squires? That don't do their fucking job? They string you up, Maximus, by your uh, lungs, and they, uh, they hang you. And let the vultures come get you. <laughs> That's what they're gonna do to you. <coughs> what? Why would you say that to the one person who could fucking save you? It could easily kill you right now. Why would you fucking say that? Why would you fucking say that? Are they just trying to make this guy like completely irredeemable so we don't care when Maximus blows his brains out two seconds from now? I have to assume. I it it just feels like this entire scene exists because we need to get this fucking guy out of the armor so that the fucking one of the main characters can actually get the armor. That's that's what it feels like. And they're just like, okay, we're going to take the simplest, quickest route to that, no matter how stupid, no matter how bullshit it is. We're going to make this guy a pathetic loser who goes off mission, who immediately pussies out the second he experiences even a little bit of combat, knocks himself out, then tells the only person who can save him, who also has a fucking gun, <laughs> and he doesn't currently, and he can barely move, that... Oh, they put people like you to death not, for not doing their job properly. They hang you, and just, that's what they're going to do to you. Not just that, but fuck you, loser. This is all your fault. They're going to kill you for this. Yeah. You fucking piece of shit. What the fuck is this writing? Like, actually, what the fuck is this? I don't know. This is completely fucked. People defended this. People are defending this. I know. That's like I'm genuinely like confused how anyone watch. I, are we sure we're not watching some bootleg version of the show? Even if we were, that would only be the dubbing, and like everything we're seeing is lining up with what's being said. Yeah. God, like, I don't know how anyone could watch this. And defend it. Yeah, I don't know either. It gotta be the worst fucking squire there is. This is all your fault. Dumb it's his first man. fucking day, and it's your fault. You're the one that fucking asked to be brought down. You didn't even asked. You demanded to be put down here off mission so that you could shoot something. And he specifically told you we shouldn't because it's off mission. The fuck is this? I also just don't believe the Brotherhood would essentially execute one of their men, one of their squires, for, like... Fucking up on their first day of the job? Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't believe that. He didn't fucking betray him. He didn't do anything. He's literally just a squire. He doesn't have armor, and the only thing he has is a fucking pistol. What someone, is he supposed to do? Someone who's also never been in combat, and he's kind of shocked in his first combat experience and like... Yeah, he's dropping the ball, but, like, oh, let's kill him for that. Really? Yeah, no, I don't believe the fucking Brotherhood would do that. And again, I don't know how this guy is a knight. I don't know how the fuck this guy made it to knighthood. It just... He would have been weeded out, like, immediately. Yeah. Give me a step back! Give me a step back! I can't breathe. It is a knight's duty... <laughs> To better this fallen world. Uh, no, that's not what the Brotherhood do. Oh my god, they, they're literally just writing over the Brotherhood with their own shit. They're technophiles who fucking hated all the outsiders. And now they're just good guy world saviors. They're, they're the heroes of the franchise. Yeah, I fucking hate this revisionist bullshit. I hate it. But yeah, he's gonna fucking kill him. Like, we know. He's either just straight up just not going to give him any meds, or he's going to shoot him. You don't deserve that armor. <clears throat> oh, you think you do? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> you 
you fuck. They'll kill you for this. <laughs> you just said they were going to kill him anyways. Yeah. All he has to do is say that you died in the line of fire. He doesn't even have to shoot you and implicate himself directly. He can claim that you died of your injuries because you're clearly dying here. And yeah. he's sitting down to watch you die. Yep. All he has to do is say that the bear fucking, you know, it, it, it did too much damage and he shot and killed it. But by the time it was dead, it was too late. And I don't even he took know. the helmet off to, to check on him and he was dead when he took it off. I don't even know how this guy is this fucked up. I don't either. Because, like, first of all, the point <laughs> of the armor is to protect you. But, like, yeah, you'd probably get some injuries from the bear, like, attacking you like he did at the end. But enough to be dying? It's like he didn't compress the chest down or fucking anything. Yeah. Apparently, the, the fucking, they're so loose in the suit that when he fell and hit his head, he just, like broke his skull open and fucking <laughs> oh, and also, gave himself a fucking he's here dying of his injuries and we're supposed to think it's Stimpak is going to completely save him yeah like come on also I, I've been ignoring it the fucking gouges in the armor from the bear like have you seen how deep that shit is yeah like, what the fuck? See, that, again, it goes against the idea that this is just a regular bear that can be taken down with a couple of pistol shots. Yet, that's exactly what we see, but somehow it can just tear through metal like it's fucking nothing. Yeah. Bears can't do that. <laughs> also, he just has it now. Yep. Yep, he let the dude die, took him out of the fucking suit, and now he's just gonna steal it. <laughs> Wow, so that really was just straight up a brotherhood night. Oh my god, dude. That's that is oh that causes so many problems. Also, how the fuck is he supposed to oh right, Bethesda. They retcon that, I forgot. Power armor training? Yep. Well, see, it used to be thing. you couldn't just wear fucking power armor. You needed specialized training to wear it, but not anymore. I, I thought they didn't have the training on 1 or 2. I thought there was something Bethesda themselves introduced in 3, so you don't get power armor 5 minutes into the game when you get to uh, GNR. I'll be honest, I don't remember if it was a thing in 1 and 2. I just remember New Vegas, mostly. I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't a thing in 1 and 2, because uh, in, unless there's just a thing I missed, that like, oh yeah, you got training off screen. But... Um, mm. In fact, I know you didn't need it in 2, because when I got to Mariposa military base, it was a fucking shock to get advanced power armor, and you could just throw it on. So this is uh, Bethesda uh, retconning their own lore, just like they did in Fallout 4. Okay. Yeah, I'm... I, like I said, I've only played 1 and 2 once. Yeah. And while I do like those games, they're just not the kind of game that I really feel the need to replay. Because I, I mostly played it for the story, which I really liked. Um, not a big fan of the gameplay, which is why I'm I like New Vegas more, and I tend to take most of my stuff from New Vegas. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I just assume that if New Vegas did it, then I figured pro one and two probably also had training. But if not, then okay. But yeah, it's just all some... right. It's just another instance of uh, Bethesda retconning their own lore. Again, they, this is something they retconned in Fallout 4, but this is something they introduced in Fallout 3. So, Yeah, that's weird. It's weird that they would introduce something like that then and then Actually, retcon it like a an, game later. It's anything but weird because it's Bethesda where they just change everything at a moment's notice because they want to. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you if they wrote a story where... Actually, no, I can't guarantee that. Never mind. So yeah, it feels like they made Knight Titus just a complete pathetic asshole just for the sake of, yeah, we don't care that Maximus is going to let him die. He deserved it for being such a shithead. Even though, like, someone like that should have never become a knight. Yeah. Yeah, and now... I don't know. It would have been one thing to let him die... And then, like, radio in for the fucking, 
Werner Bird to come pick you up and say like, oh yeah, he was killed by the bear. Yeah, they do have long distance communication because in Fallout 4, one they they want you to search for the old team that got lost and they they lost communication with them. Yep. So, and I'm assuming, you know, if they're dropping them here, they would have to have a way to get in contact with them to be like, okay, I killed my thing, come pick us up so we can get back on mission. Um but you know, it, it, it would be fine if that's all it was. But now he's going to steal this armor and walk away. I don't think the Brotherhood would buy his story at that point. I don't think they would believe that the Yaogwai killed him on its own. I don't even believe that. I just saw it happen. Yeah, well, I'm... I'm saying maybe he could get away with what he did if he were to immediately radio in for, like, evac. If, if we assume best-case scenario and he, for some reason, doesn't have a radio, which doesn't really make sense, but if we assume that, then it would make sense for him to take the armor and return home. Or try to capture this guy and somehow bring him back. But, like, how are you going to get this guy all the way back there? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, let's be honest. With this writing, they probably won't even give a shit that the fucking knight is dead. Yeah. They'll probably just... They'll, they'll be like, oh, well, well, someone needs to fill the armor. You're promoted, just like they did fucking <laughs> earlier with him. They, they'd probably just promote him on the spot with no fucking... Like, no training, no proper training to be a knight, no fucking anything. Like, none of the requirements would need to be met. He, he would just be, well, someone needs to fill the suit. I guess it's you. Yeah. Hell, that's probably how fucking Titus got it first. Like, <laughs> his, he was a squire. His fucking lord died right in front of him. And they were just like, well, someone needs to be in it. I guess it's you. And that's why he's such a massive pussy. Why didn't you grab his gun? Yeah, why didn't you go back for the fucking rifle, you idiot? And he should have the, the big oversized rucksack, too, because, you know, that has all of your supplies in it. Yeah, what the fuck? Why do you not have anything other than the suit, you fucking idiot? If it's all his, if it's this is exactly why you don't give these people fucking, like, untrained people power armor. Because he's treating it like it's a toy. Yep. I fucking hate this. Uh. No. It doesn't you know give funny? you superpowers. Yeah, no, it, it would not allow you to do that. But also, I can't help but notice they did like the really over exaggerated movements earlier. But now, when it would actually kind of benefit from doing more exaggerated, like. <laughs> less <laughs> awkward movements they're no longer doing it and it looks really fucking clunky and unwieldy to even like remotely move in this thing yeah almost like it's a really bad hollywood prop <laughs> the other thing is if he if this power armor allows him to throw a brick off into the fucking distance like team rocket then uh, how was Buddy not able to do more damage punching the bear? Yeah, he should have broke its fucking neck like it was nothing. Yeah, if you have the capabilities of throwing a brick that far, you have the capabilities of not even just breaking the bear's ribs, he should have been able to punch straight through the fucking skin. Well, from what we just saw, he should have been able to have just picked a rock off the ground and threw it at it, and it should have fucking went straight through the bear like a fucking cannon. Yeah, pretty much. Like, what the fuck? It's so inconsistent. It just can't decide what... They, this show cannot decide what it wants power armor to be. This show can't decide what it wants anything to be. It's like, <sighs> people yeah. are saying this is consistent with the games. <laughs> I this... wish you could do this in the games. Holy fuck, imagine if you could just pick stuff up, up, up off the ground and fucking just sling it through all your enemies like it's a fucking shotgun. Dude, you could pick up, like, a signpost or a small tree. 
and just throw it like a javelin straight through your enemies. Yeah. Like, I believe that, you know, the power armor would be significant enough to, like, let you do some pretty insane stuff. Like, you know, the, the fact that they can even pick up and use super sledges says a lot. You know, it's like it's clearly giving you a boost to strength, but I don't think it would do that. Like j- that level of strength is just, dude. We're talking. You should be able to pick up a rock, break it in your hand, like crush it, and then sling the pieces, and that should literally be the equivalent of a shotgun. Like you would never need to actually carry a gun around with you. You could just break rocks in your hand and turn it into shotguns. Like yeah, shotgun if, if you can throw things with that amount of force. Yeah, it would literally just shred anything in front of you. Oh, come yeah, on, no, come what on, the fuck, off. fuck? Yeah, no, I don't think it could do that. Even in the games, it would not. You would not be able to do something like that. They're treating it like a Spartan armor from Halo. Yeah, because that stuff does genuinely like increase your abilities um well in, that in and he's of, like, actually and stuff. that and he's actually like a super soldier with like implants and stuff you know, yeah yeah implants and like his biology is different and everything yeah but yeah they're treating this like it's halo spartan armor they just turned on and he has strength far in excess of what a normal human could ever do mm-hmm God, it's it's mind, just so weird. This isn't... We can ignore the games on this one. This is a show being inconsistent with itself. Yeah. Where, like, if he can kick a rock through a building and cause that building to collapse, why couldn't Buddy kick the bear? Yeah, if, I don't get it. If Knight Titus had fucking kicked that bear straight in the dick, you would have ruptured probably his entire pelvis and killed it. Well, from the strength we're seeing here, when the bear was staggered, if he had literally just like uppercut it, he should have it should have killed it. it and he did nothing. Literally taken its head off. Yeah. What the fuck, man? And then you have the fact that they added the the ability that these things can fucking fly. Like what the fuck? <sighs> they made it so overpowered, it's just insane. Well, it needs to be overpowered because everyone's favorite faction, the Brotherhood, uses them, Pagan. Oh my god. I, I, I'm i sure they probably fucking <laughs> changed the whole, like, suit power system where the fusion cores, you have to fart out a fusion core every fucking ten minutes and replace it. Now, no, no. it probably <laughs> just runs forever now. You probably don't even need you know a fucking is, power so- source for it now. I wouldn't be surprised if the fusion core came up, but it's going to be a situation of, oh yeah, the fusion core every five minutes, that's just a gameplay thing. Even though the show is simultaneously treating stim packs as if they're a magic cure-all. Mm-hmm. It's a gameplay Hell, I wouldn't thing be surprised. Con- convenient to us. I wouldn't be surprised if just to get out of it, of like having to do, you like find new fusion cores every episode or some shit. They're literally just going to be like, oh, well, we used to use regular fusion cores, but uh, we've perfected the technology since then, so now it only needs one fusion core per lifetime. Oh, God. Like, yeah. I could honestly see them doing that. Okay, but then how are they going to retcon that for Fallout 5 when we need to shit out of, uh, a new fusion core every five minutes? <laughs> they sold fucking merchandise of the fusion core. Well, they'll just say it's a gameplay mechanic now. All right. <laughs> You'd be too overpowered if we didn't let you, if we didn't make you change your new one every 10 minutes. So can I? So it's a gameplay thing. Bethesda, Todd Howard, can I expect this kind of power I'm seeing on screen from Power Armor next time I play Fallout? Can I kick a rock through a building and cause it to collapse? Can I throw a brick as a projectile into the far distance and potentially hurt and kill someone. You know, I would actually (laughs) find it kind of funny if in the next game they actually did let you just straight up, like, with in power armor, 
you could just pick up like bricks and use them as like weapons where you you could just throw them and it's it's literally like the rocket launcher from fucking fallout 3 in terms of like the damage where if you throw it at someone's head it just like blows their head off <laughs> like if they actually did that i would actually be like okay you know what bethesda i'll give you a point for that one well, i mean with the strength we've seen here this guy should be able to clap his hands and fucking crush someone's head in them oh he should probably do more than that with that kind of strength uh i could expect that from the regular power armor <laughs> Like in game, like the like the already existing power armor we have, I think you could crush someone's yeah. head by clapping your hands together. No, I think what this thing should do is if you clapped your hands, it should literally destroy small vehicles in front of it. You you clap someone's head in between your hands in this power armor, and the impact is so strong it causes a shock wave that ripples through the entire body and just liquefies everything as the skin breaks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> if you were to clap someone's head in this armor, they would literally just evaporate in the mist. <laughs> fucking ass. Unhand That's him. gonna be it. This is the end of your fucking day. I said unhand him. Unhand him. <laughs> How the table is turned! I'm just like, are, are you fucking? Are you not gonna ask what's happening? Or what if this guy's a murderer? What if he just killed this guy's whole family, and you're just holding the victim down and forcing him to look at his fucking murderers, like his family's murderer? Yeah. Like, ask a fucking question. Don't just let him walk away. Yeah, I hate this. Do something, you fucking idiot. I'm sorry. Okay. Don't, don't murder me. It's just, the guy was fucking my chickens. Uh, okay, well, there's the bestiality check mark, okay. You know, when people said that in the server, I didn't think that was real. I assume that was someone shit posting about how bad the show is. What? Why does this need to be here, though? Like, I, I assume stuff like this would happen in this world, but why does it? Why do we need this here in the show? I don't know. Why couldn't it have just been any other crime? Why couldn't it have just been like, like he was stealing my food or some shit? He was stealing something. I don't know. Or, or he, he fucking. I don't know, he cut the ear off of my daughter or something. Something! Yeah, this... Just anything other than this. Like, come on. Also, the fact that it's treated like a punchline. Yeah. It was fucking my chickens. What the fuck, man? I think the whole fusion core thing for power armor is dumb. I don't really think it needs a, a power supply that you constantly need to replenish. Yeah. However jetpack fuel i feel like should actually be something you need to replenish yeah absolutely i feel like it should only be able to be used in like short bursts and wouldn't last very long like at all like i don't even think you could use it for more than maybe an hour like yeah. like sustained and after that, you would need to, like, actually refill it. So if this guy can literally just fly around the wasteland in this fucking armor and never need to refill it, that is a massive problem. Because mm -hmm. how the fuck did they create a fucking energy source that is just perpetual thrust for something as big as... Well, I guess, I don't know, because then you have the whole fucking Mr. Handies. They have the same thing, and they never have to refuel. Actually, it's kind of a funny thing, where um, Fallout 4 actually shows Mr. Handy fuel, implying that they need to be refueled, but it also simultaneously says they never need to be refueled. Yeah. It's just one of those things at Bethesda. Someone had the nerve to tell me, that Bethesda is more faithful to the Fallout franchise than the original developers were. Fucking what? When they're not even they can't faithful even get... to their own stuff. 
they can't even get shit right in their own games. Like, I'm not even talking from, like, Fallout 3 to Fallout 4. They can't even remain consistent in their own, like, single game. Yeah. Fallout 4 has so many contradictions to itself. It's insane. Yep. And then if you were to take in the whole, like, f- between Fallout 3 and Fallout 4, it gets even worse. Yep. And if you take Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 to the show... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, this is fucked. I like how everything else is rusted, but this metal tubing into this diner, I guess, is just, like, pristine. Yeah. It's not even dented. I also don't like that they're doing the whole junk thing still. Like, every town is a junk town has to be a junk town or every building has to be like a fucking craft shack that doesn't even have a roof. Yeah. Like, why is it that nothing is ever being built in any of the Bethesda fallout stuff in, in I, one and two, they were making new buildings in new Vegas. They were making new buildings in three, four and this they're not. I have to assume that's the reason they killed the NCR is so they can start making games on the West Coast and keep that perpetual wasteland Mad Max vibe to it of, oh yeah, this is the wasteland where people build their homes out of junk. Because why the guess. fuck else would they destroy the biggest faction in the entire franchise? Well, because they're petty little shitheads who are like, oh, they made something better than us. Maybe. And people praise them instead of us, so we're going to show them. That's what it feels like to me. It does kind of feel like that. But yeah, I I hate that it feels like Bethesda looked at Fallout 1 for like only two seconds, saw Junktown existed, and was like, wow, that's such a cool idea. Yeah, everything would be made of junk. Okay, we'll do that too. And they just made everything out of junk, not realizing that the other towns actually had like proper buildings that were either refurbished or just straight up made new buildings entirely. Yeah. Oh boy. It's Megaton 2.0. Yep. There's just no bomb in this one. I was actually scared for a second there that it would show the middle of the town and there actually would be a bomb there. (laughs) <laughs> I I was legit like I watched them prove me wrong. I'm so glad they didn't. I'm sorry, that's not even a Brahmin, that's just a two headed cow. Yeah. For anyone who hasn't played the games, this image on screen is what a Brahmin looks like. The vaults were nothing more than a hole in the ground for rich folks to hide in. Well, there's your haves and have-nots. I, they, God, I got so many people on that video saying stupid stuff like, how do you not see how this Fallout is about haves and have-nots? It's simple. The people in the vaults were the haves. Uh, except for, you know, all the horrible experimentation that happened on them, and I'd say they actually got the worst end of the deal most of the time. There was only a few control vaults that didn't have those. Yeah, there was only so um, extreme few rare experiment vaults where like people survived and led a decent life. Mm-hmm. Someone described to me, re- you remember how there's those two vaults, the one with uh, one thousand women and one man, and then uh, one thousand men and one women or one woman. Someone yeah. described the uh, 1,000 woman and one man vault as a guy having his own harem. Or harem. Uh, that is not how I would describe being stuck in a vault as one guy with all women. I would be... That, that would be hell. That would literally be hell. I mean, you could make the argument that the rapes would be just as bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like you would just be meat. You would be a, like, honestly, they'd probably just have you strapped down to a machine where you can't move, and they would like have 
like food and water fed to you through like a tube. And that was just like your whole life is just strapped to a machine where you fuck women like whenever they wanted. Yeah, probably. Like, uh, it would not be a pleasant experience. It would probably be really fucked up. Yeah. And no, they didn't choose the vaults based on rich people either. They choose the vaults on what kind of people would be useful to their experiment. Whether it's just people yeah. who are locally closer, like the, the vault full of uh, gambling addicts, for example. They didn't pick rich people for that. They picked people who had a history of gambling addiction. Yep. Yeah, you think they put the rich people in the fucking experimental vaults and shit? Hell no. They, Those people had their own private fucking bunkers and shit. They didn't go to Vault Tech. Vault Tech was the was literally the fucking like mass produced uh, consumer grade. Yeah, uh, it was like the mass produced fucking bargain bin version of like a, a fallout shelter where anyone could get in. You just had to be approved. Yeah. And you did not have to be rich to be approved. You just had to fit the criteria. You could be fucking poor and you could literally have nothing like poor as dirt and nothing to your name. And they would still let you in. So long as you fit the criteria of their experiment. Yeah. It's literally not a have and have not situation, but now it, it was is fucked on both ends. They decided that it's the haves and have nots, man. Yep. Those haves sure were lucky to get into that one vault where they, uh, put psychedelics in the air to make everyone fucking kill each other. The halves were super duper lucky to get into the one vault where you had to constantly sacrifice someone if you wanted everyone else to keep living, only to find out it was an experiment and not doing the sacrifice would fucking award you that, hey, you overcame this uh, absurd belief that you constantly need to sacrifice someone. Yep. Oh, yeah, I would love to be one of the have-nots that got stuck in the fucking vault that was supposedly about preserving music, and it was actually testing psionics that drove everyone mad and caused them to kill each other. You mean one of the haves? Did I say have-nots? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Why do I always do that? I always fuck up the fucking <laughs> beginning part of the sentence I'm about to say. I don't know why I do that. <laughs> I do that too, don't worry. But yeah, it would be great to have one of the fucking halves that got into the fucking vault that literally melts your fucking brain. Yep. It would have been nice to be one of the halves that got put into the vault where everyone got infected with spores and became fucking plant creatures that kill everything. Oh my god, yeah. It would have been nice to be one of the halves that got put into the vault where the door wouldn't close properly so they could study how fucking extreme doses of radiation is dealt with by the human body, which turned everyone into ghouls or killed them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Hell, even the fucking... Even the vault that is... So the Fallout 4 vault that you could actually go to and is currently being lived in, that one had a horrible test in it everyone would have died of some like horrific disease. The only reason they didn't is because the fucking staff on the other side were killed by said disease before it had a chance to get to the actual vault dwellers. Yep. It was only by sheer luck that they didn't get fucked over. Yeah. So yeah, to say that, Oh yeah, it's just the rich people who got in. It's fucking insanity. Yeah, also, actual pure retardation. 220 years past the fucking bombs dropping, how would this old bitch even know about any of this? Yeah. You know what folks up here say about the vaults? What? Fuck the vaults. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, this is... Oh, this is like child writing, dude. It feels like a two-year-old wrote this. Yeah, I... 
What the fuck? This is shit. This is not how Vault Dwellers were treated in the original games. They were just seen as, like, anomalies. Like, it, it was, it, they were interested. It was like, oh, well, that's weird. Like, So you you lived in one of these underground vaults that, you know, like, where you you don't get irradiated and you have clean water? Wow. That's weird. No, we have to make it about haves and have-nots now, though, Pagan, because rich people bad. And only the rich people will have gotten in the vaults, and the vaults were all perfectly fine and desirable and good. Fuck the vaults. Fuck vault dwellers. I hate them. And you should, too. Yeah, this is... This is shit. Last night, a bounty came in through all six agencies. A hefty price on the head of a man that fits the description of that fellow right there. Now, I may not know much, but I do know a bidding war when I see one. But I've been paid a whole lot of caps to provide this man safe transport out of Philly. Really? What the fuck? Why would you... Uh, okay. I got a thousand bottle caps, boo! Whoever kills that fucker! Oh, this fucking music! Ugh! Why do they keep doing the fucking yodeling? It's so fucking... It takes any tension out of the fucking scene. It's, it's like a parody. It's a fucking joke. It's like they're mocking him. Yeah. What the fuck is this gun? What? Uh, what? Are we actually going to do the fucking like? Oh, ghouls are literally undead and they can't be killed with bullets. Are you fucking kidding? But totally in line with the games, guys. Totally in line with the games. It's also just how shit this entire action sequence is. Yeah, it's fucking. What is that gun? I'm sorry. What the fuck is that weird pistol that shoots like fucking I don't know. I, I can't even say like grenade launcher rounds because the things it was firing was not like the fucking percussion cap things that you would see on a oh well, no uh, uh not not percussion cap uh fuck I forget what they're called the like half cylinder that uh actual grenade launchers fire it's not even one of those it looks like a little tiny like m- mini nuke yeah. Just trying to like, figure what out. the f- fuck is that thing? You got a hole in your neck. You should not be this nonchalant about taking two to three shots in the back. Yeah, he should be fucking dying. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask you to leave him alone. Now, I acknowledge that I'm unfamiliar with your circumstances. Now, if your instinct is to harm me, then I'll have to assume of the two of you, you are likely the primary aggressor. In which case, I think everyone in this town would agree the force is justified. You mean everyone who just got killed? This yeah, is way oh my worse god. In context. Yeah, in context, this is way way worse than what we saw in the trailer or in the like release footage that we saw this is it was already cringe then now it's just straight up like oh so you're actually like down syndrome or something right well it's also the fact that he wins because he has magic explodey bullets and he wins because he doesn't take damage yeah like and- I, I, i'm sorry what the fuck is the fucking shit with him and not taking damage from getting shot but it's also, How? it's also the fact that she's like, oh, force is warranted here. That kind of implies that, like, yeah, everyone is going to rise up against you if you try to do anything here. 
in context, he's already fucking won. Yeah. Who's going to fucking... Like, is she just justifying her own action? Because what the fuck do you think you're going to do, you dumb bint? Yeah, you have a fucking dart gun. What's that going to do compared to actual bullets, which we've seen don't do anything to him? For some reason. Time for cringe. She said stand down. God, it looks so shit. Yeah, this looks awful. Hey, you know what would have been helpful here? If he took the fucking assault rifle that Buddy had and didn't abandon all of his supplies? Mm-hmm. Again, this is worse in context. What the fuck is he supposed to do? Like, yeah, you're in armor. But... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's weird because in from what we've seen from the show, he should be able to literally punch this guy into paste. He should be able in to one throw punch. something at him and turn him into paste. Yeah, but because we've already seen how it goes in fight scenes, I feel like if he punched him, it would do literally nothing but like slightly fucking knock him off his feet like a yeah. couple of steps. And then he'd be like, oh, that kind of hurt. And fucking, I don't know, would just use that fucking mini nuke pistol thing i have no clue what that fucking gun is and just destroy him yeah i've actually seen part of the scene and it's actually so much worse than you think also how many fucking shots does he have in that thing it looks like a fucking tiny revolver that's shooting these like grenade launcher type rounds and he's just constantly shooting them off and uh, He's literally aiming it at her as if he still has more shots. How many shots are in this thing? Yeah, I don't know. How, how does it possibly hold more than one? We saw him reload a shotgun. We didn't see him reload this. Yeah. And I just can't imagine. like Those things are pretty big. Okay. Something that small would not be able to hold more than one. Yeah. And yeah, it, it holds like six or well, at this point, with how many times we've seen him shoot it, I I guess literally just infinite. It, which I don't understand how that way. works. God, remember when shows used to actually have, like, guns that made sense and actually kept track of ammo, and it would actually play into the scene later when people would, like, get low on ammo or run out, and then the the protagonist would use that time in between where they would have to reload to actually do something to get the upper hand. But now we just don't have that kind of shit anymore because guns just have infinite fucking clips for some reason. We we don't have that anymore because guns have infinite clips until we need something story related to happen, at which point suddenly the bad guy who previously had infinite ammo will need to reload. Or vice versa. Mm-hmm. Titus of the Brotherhood of Steel, stand down or be cut down. You got. There's something also fucked up about him stealing Buddy's name. Yeah, that's weird. That would, that would definitely cause problems when he goes back to them. Yeah, why wouldn't you say that you're a Maximus? What the fuck? Probably to intimidate him, but still. I don't know. I feel like Maximus would be just as intimidating. But he can't take like if word got back to the Brotherhood that he's calling himself Knight Maximus. You know, and Squire Maximus is like, oh, how'd you get that then? You know? <sighs> Maybe. But the fact that he's using the name of The guy he let die, yeah, I know. It's completely fucked. It's I feel like if they found out about that, they would all they would be just as angry. Yeah. So, either way, it's like, I don't know. Completely fucked. It's kind of yeah. weird. Also, <laughs> the line, stand down or I'll cut you down. You kind of lack the required resources to do the cutting of the down. Yeah. You don't really have a gun, you fucking idiot. It's kind of hard to cut someone down when you don't have the implement to do it, to do such. Wait, did he have a laser? Or is that the pistol? Oh, it's the pistol.
That is not the same gun. What the fuck is that? Where did he get that? I don't know. He had it strapped to him earlier when he was running. But Buddy, I didn't, I didn't notice it on Buddy earlier. Um, on yeah, Titus. why wouldn't he have pulled? Yeah, why wouldn't he have pulled it out to deal with the fucking Yao Guai when he got the fucking rifle knocked out of his hand? Why run away when you could just pull that thing out? What? Where did he get that? Really? Okay, so like your organs should be liquefied, your rib cage should be dust. And maybe yeah. even your spine too. He, he should be fucked. If if he is just completely unharmed. Uh, no. <laughs> just no. I don't care. I don't care what kind of new like bullshit they try to invent for ghouls in this universe. Fuck off. Oh, fuck off. Actually, fuck off. How are you uninjured? You should be dead. I hate this. I hate this so much. How could there be any stakes? If the, this fucking character is just immortal and just can't die. Yeah. And also remember, this is completely consistent with the games. What the fuck, man? I, I don't what know how people action. can say that unironically. What? what? I'm sorry, what the fuck is this technology? Yeah, what? What is this shit? We, we did not have this in Fallout. When you lost a limb, you just lost a limb. But also... That's all it was. But also, here's this thing that when you lose a limb, it's going to chew up your leg and bone and not seal the wound, and then we're just going to screw a metal foot onto it. What? Yeah, what? How does this thing work? How is he not bleeding out right now? It should have made the bleeding out worse, honestly, based on what we just fucking saw. Chuck is yeah. even conscious. Like, blood should be gushing out of that thing right now. Like, what the actual fuck? And In fact, all it did was... It, it looked like a grinder, so all it would have done was, like, make it worse, make yeah. it Yeah, it wouldn't have even, like, held it on. It would have just, like, made his leg less stable to put something on. But also, even if we assume blood loss isn't a problem, you've still got, like, an open wound down there. And, like, with... It's gonna start fucking festering. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this thing? Shit. It also looks like shit. Yeah, it does. But what does Mold even want with you? I mean, she steals dads. God. Oh my they, god. They can't help but just make it stupid and insufferable. Yeah. Yeah, this is just painful. She's such an idiot. Like, this isn't even explained by, like, being an out of touch vault dweller that's never seen real fucking conflict before it's just oh what would she want with them she steals dads like actually fucking kill yourself holy shit mm -hmm. just just get to the coordinates and the rads move pretty quick in and out through oh. there so you're gonna need to move fast if you want to keep your scans all right I the rads move pretty quick yeah what what the fuck does that mean do you just mean there's a lot of it there's a lot of radiation is that what you're trying to say? And you're just too retarded, or are you actually are you actually trying to say that the radiation moves quickly? Which what the fuck does that mean? Literally, grab one of the wooden beams and start beating him, even if he is a magically immortal fucking stupid Bethesda ghoul that doesn't die when grievously injured you can still turn his bones into dust so he'll never move again i was gonna say just walk over there and fucking curb stomp his head into like a melon that too and if that doesn't work just keep just keep st stomping on his head over and over and over and over until he passes out yeah oh 
you fucking idiot. Really? You can kick through buildings, but you can't break wood? Read the manual. Okay, watch this. I've seen this. Oh. Looks so fucking dog shit. Yeah, he flies off like a fucking cartoon character. Also, why would... Causing damage to one of the tubes on the outside of the helmet fuck you up this badly? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's a massive weak point. Yeah, and I feel like it would be pretty easy to shoot or yeah. like get hit with a stray bullet. So, how is this not like constantly happening to fucking yeah Brotherhood Knights like all the time? Jesus, that is. It's literally an Iron Man suit if it could do that. I mean, God. What if the power armor actually is an Iron Man suit in the next Fallout game? Because that's what they're fucking turning it into. I wouldn't be surprised. I, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if they literally just made Fallout 5, like, basically just a reskinned anthem. Oh, God. Like, I like the Iron Man suit, but it's it has no place in this universe. Especially on power yeah. armor. Look, there's literally blood coming out of it. How is he not fucking gonna bleed to death? What like, the fuck is this? Like, this is so awful that you don't even need to be a fan of the games and familiar with the lore to see why this is completely fucked. How are people defending this? I, uh, actually, I... Uh, <sighs> How are there people critical of other media defending this? That's my thing. Like, I'm sorry, guys, but what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. How have you ever criticized anything else and then said this is good? Like, you're defending this of all things. Like, I'm sorry. There's something wrong with you if you think this is defendable. Yeah, this is through and through rancid dog shit. You don't even have to be a fan of the games to recognize that there's problems with this. Being fans of the games, being familiar with the game should only make it worse. Like I like I know we've been saying like, oh, I think this is actually worse than this thing. This is actually worse than this thing. I can genuinely say this is actually worse than Cowboy Bebop fucking live action. Like for sure. Yeah. Like it was bad. This has more problems than that did. Yeah. It is so bad. It, it, people were more than willing to shit on the fucking Cowboy Bebop live action, but they'll defend this? How? This is worse. Like, this is objectively worse than that. Uh, what? He sh so he should be dead. The other guy literally fell and bumped his head on a rock and died. He just crash landed on his head. He should be fucking dead then, right? Hopefully. I mean, I hope, but I doubt it. We know he's not going to be because we've seen trailer footage beyond this where he's still alive. I can't get over how big the needles are, too. Like, the actual tube. There's a reason they're small and thin in real life. Yeah. Also, where's the knife wound? It's just, like, gone. It's on the other side, I think. Maybe. Really? Come on. Really? It's just actual magic at this point. Yeah, that's insane. That That's literally just... Yeah, it's just magic. It, it, there's no other way around it. It's just magic. Like it didn't even take in, it didn't even take time. It was literally instant. The moment that he injected him, he was just better. Yeah. Like what the fuck? Also, why is the dog all of a sudden like friendly to him? Like it, it knows that he's the one that stabbed him, right? It has to. I would assume the dog would be smart enough, but no. He's happy now because he's sniffing down the trail of his master. What the fuck, man? This is. <sighs> This makes no sense. This isn't how dogs work, by the way. They don't just fucking 
become friendly with strangers. Especially after they after said stranger stabbed them. It, it doesn't work. They, they don't get reset like a computer. They're not robots. Jesus Christ, man, this is bad. Also, imagine how bad that would hurt, too. Having your fucking leg mangled and then stuffed into a fucking grinder and then you have to walk yeah. on said grinder. Like, I'm sorry, no. You are you would go into shock from the pain. Yeah. Like, there's no way you would be able to do this. Especially walking miles upon miles. Yeah, there's just no way. God, this is shit. You know, and none of this would have even been an issue if they just hadn't had the fucking ghoul guy just randomly blow his fucking leg off for no reason. Yeah, because here's the thing, too, why that's completely fucked. Ghoul guy needs to transport him, too. Yeah. What's he going to do? Carry him the whole way? Even if it was just a kill mission for him, that head ain't going to last long on its own. Yeah. What the fuck, man? I, I I can't get over how they keep putting themselves... Like, they have easy outs. Where it's just like, oh, well, if we just don't blow his leg off, no problem. Like, we can easily ride around that. It, it, they keep doing that, too. Because remember the, the thing with the, uh, the Pip-Boy? Well, if they had just had the guy walk past the fucking Pip-Boy, like, you know, like, really close, and then it went off a little bit, and it's like, oh... You know, she realizes, oh, he's radiated. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make any sense. You know, they, they could have just had that happen instead of her running over, putting it on and pointing it at his general direction from several feet away and it going off like crazy, which why the fuck wasn't all of the pit boys going off during the dinner scene? Yeah, they have Geiger counters. They should have all been going off. Yep. Holy moly. He's literally losing blood. Like, what the fuck? I'm not going to make it. Yeah, no shit. No, you see, I've just taken a cyanide pill. What? what? The vault Tech Plan D. It was the most humane product that vault Tech ever made. It was quick, painless, it tasted like banana. Oh, fuck off. I, I was surprised it wasn't more popular. The most humane product vault tech had ever made fuck off man this is so cartoonishly stupid like this is honestly the kind of shit that i would expect like a communist to write like uh, oh corporation evil like like cartoonishly evil yeah but how am i gonna bring you if you're you know, not not my whole body Just my head. Because oh the thing he my. injected into himself is a fucking information thing. At least it's oh not the my. dog. Hold on, hold on. I don't know if you realize how fucked this is. I don't think he's gonna die. I think they're gonna carry his severed head around and he's still gonna be alive. As oh. a severed head. I hope not. They said he just took cyanide. Surely he's gonna die. I fucking hope so, but I don't know. From uh, I don't know. This feels like because remember we saw them carrying heads. Yeah, they in one like, of the uh, they looked like moldering, rotting heads though. I don't know, man. We'll see. We'll see. He better be fucking dead. He better die from this. Like getting his head lopped off. The, he the better be fucking dead. The fucked up thing is that it's even a question we have to ask because. They've so thoroughly fucked the lore in, first of all, the two uh, previous Bethesda games, as well as 76, depending how canon you want to count that, but also in this show, in this first two episodes. Mm-hmm. Okay, hopefully it is just a severed dead head, and we don't actually get, like, a fucking... some bullshit where the, the chip in his head brings him back to life, and he can talk as like a severed head and he's like a ghoul head or some shit oh god I, I, mm. 
Fuck this entire show. Yeah, the fact I have to even question if that's what they're going to do is like, that's already a problem. Keep in mind, eight episodes, we're two episodes in, we're quarter of the way through. We've seen 25% of what this show has to offer, and it has not improved. Yeah. And I don't know how you could have, like, even if the writing suddenly becomes stellar 10 out of 10 from this point forward, you're still dealing with the fact that it's built on a rotten foundation. And, like, yeah. even if the writing improves, even if the dialogue improves, even if everything else improves, sure, okay, that's nice and fine. But the stank of these first two episodes is going to permeate throughout those because even if they're 100% consistent from this point forward, it's going to be in impossible to be consistent with these two episodes when these two uh, episodes are inconsistent with themselves. Yeah. And with the rest of the fucking franchise. <sighs> but canon to the show, by the way. Canon to the show. Canon to the games. Uh, it's faithful to the games. It's respectful of the games. It's really good. Yep. Completely fucking canon. <laughs> the thing, too, is oh that they God. turned the power armor flying into straight up Iron Man flying when even in fallout 4 the the jetpack was super limited it was to get you from like ground floor to the second level type thing it wasn't it didn't allow you to fly across the fucking city yeah no it it literally could not go further than like a few feet it, it was literally just you go up like maybe about a floor in height mm-hmm and then you immediately began descending again. And once you did, that was it. You you could not go up again. You would just descend. At least until you landed and it recharged, then you can do it again. Yeah, that's what I mean. You couldn't yeah. just perpetually fly in the air. You could not do that. It was like a it was more like a jumping thing. It wasn't even like a real jetpack. It was more like it allowed you to jump higher. Here, it's literally just you fly. You fly as far as you want. Which I have to question, why do you even need a vertebrate at that point? Why can't you just fly this thing like an Iron Man suit? I, I do want to say something. I don't mind this end credits thing where it's a camera pulling out from a location. It's kind of visually neat. I, I don't hate it. That's pretty much the only good thing I could say about the show aside from the sets aren't completely terrible the costumes aren't completely terrible yeah like the, the only thing I can praise is the way the show looks and only in certain regards because like yeah. the junk town thing I, I hate I hate that everything in a Bethesda it genuinely like feels product like there's more effort put into this sequence than the entire rest of the show yeah. I I don't like the junk town shit that's always in everything, Bethesda, and I don't like uh I'm just not a big fan of the Fallout 4 aesthetic as we've established and yeah. the weird like background stuff we saw going on. I don't know what the fuck was up with that. That was just weird. Yeah. Yeah, it genuinely feels like there's more effort put into this sequence than anything else in the show. Because this took time to, like, design all this and render it out and have the camera move back and just, like, look visually interesting. 